YouTube, it's Electric Adventures here with my channel update for May 2013. This is my monthly video where I go over um, my other pickups, uh, stuff I don't consider t to be um, strictly retro related. Because <coughs> um, yes, I do get some modern stuff and some close to modern stuff or just other stuff that doesn't really fit into a normal pickup video because um, I like to do my pickup and plays where each item I have a gameplay. Um, and uh, the first few items, so our, we have one EB Games um, that, I mean we've got lots of EB Games stores, but there's one EB Games where they seem to get all of the PSP items sent to. Um, and I've been going there um, on a semi-regular basis, um, it was actually a more convenient store for me to park. And another YouTube friend of mine, Soft Taku, um, is after some PSP titles, so I've been looking out to see whether more pop up there. So it seems like whenever they get a PSP traded in and with games, they send them all to that store. So, um, I mean, there's a chance that there's new stuff there all the time. Now, recently they had a bit of a sale on, and I suppose good timing. Um, I went in there and went through, and there were some, actually some titles that I was interested in. So, um, and uh, this particular, the first one, is one... Um, I think Metal Jesus Rocks um, showed recently, I didn't know it existed, and is Ultimate Ghoul Ghosts and Goblins. Um, and it's a modern take on the Ghosts and Goblins game, and it's actually a really cool game. It's just as blink and hard as the original <laughs> arcade game though, it is though, um, but um, at least it's not you know two hits and you're dead, so it does have a little bit more depth there. Um, I'm still not very good at it. Um, but as you can see, so it's second hand, it's not new or anything like that. <coughs> now, the game's not in there because it's in my PSP, because I'm playing it at the moment. Um, but the manuals, it's all in really good condition. So I'm very happy to get that one. Um, and the next one is another one of the um, collections or mixes that I didn't have. And at Activision Hits Remixed. So of course that's got a really good lot of 2600 Activision games on it. And they all play really well. And then it's also in my PSP at the moment. I've got a multi-game case. I don't carry a couple around with me. So I've been playing that one. That one's been quite good. Um, and another one, this was the cheapest of the lot, but I am a bit of a Formula One person, and I've only got one other racing game on my PSP, which is Ridge Racer, and I thought I'd give this one a go. So this one, as you can see, has had a few more stickers and things on it in its life, but in other respects it's still all in pretty good condition so uh, it's probably just been multiple discounts and everything like that the formula one games um a bit like sports games in some regard to some people but i still like them now this next one is the sequel to um to another game untold legends of the warriors code and i've played the original one that wasn't too bad although i found it to be a little buggy i didn't actually ever finish it um, because it kept on crashing on me when I got to a certain thing and I got frustrated with it. So I haven't started playing this one yet. <coughs> but I do like to have a bit of RPG on the go occasionally. It's probably about the only way I get through RPG games is if they're portable and that's all in good condition. There is a sticker over the top of there that I haven't been able to fully take off. <coughs> and last but not least, I'd um, I only recently uh, played the God of War games on the PS2, I um, quite enjoyed them, and I'd heard from other people that the God of War on the PSP was also quite good. So there was this one, uh, Chains, of, you know, Chains of Olympus, I believe there's a second one as well. Um, and there were actually quite a few copies of the God of War games in the bin, um, several of them were the Essentials one, and I do try and pick up the non-essentials. Uh, ones where I can, so I grabbed that one. Um, so, and, and in a way, that was a bit of my birthday money that I spent there. Um, and then my cousin came round um, and gave me this. So it's an Action Replay Max Ultimate Cheap System for the PS2. Um, no, I haven't had a chance to use it yet. We do have multiple PS2s in this house. Most of my kids have one in their room, and I've got one in each lounge room. And it basically consists of um, some manuals, several of them, and different. I think they might be different 
languages, but the main thing is the actual CD. And pretty much you run it and install it on your memory card and then you don't need the CD anymore. Um, and he'd already done his um, PlayStation 2 and he said I knew I had multiple ones so he's given it to me to, to run them all mine and obviously since I collect boxes and things like that it's nice to have the box to go along with it as well. Um, and I actually had this last month but I forgot to get it out. Um, I thought I'd stop procrastinating I mean because I do do some retro repairs but I'm a little bit hesitant because I haven't done soldering for quite some time and I have done some more this month um, and I thought well I'll go out and get a proper electronics course booklet so this is electronic and electronics teach yourself it's a full uh, proper course that takes you through everything um, I've probably only gotten about you know 30 pages in to the first set of quizzes uh, which are all like the physics um, questions um, not doing too bad but I mean like you know you've got to be in the right mood to work on this sort of stuff but it's a general principle of mine to keep on working and on that related thing I have done another Coleco AV mod because I had a spare Coleco and I basically did it whilst I was in a teleconference meeting so I'm, my soldering must be getting better and I'm working my way up to being able to fix the couple of game gears that I have I have all the parts I do need the tool to be able to open the game gear, I've got to get a special screwdriver for that. Um, but then the soldering in those is quite small, so I believe I may be ready for that now. Um, now another thing, whilst um, this this problem actually sort of started by a game I got for the MSX that I haven't been able to show, uh, which is Space Mambo, um, because the MSX2 um, can be put into a different um, I think it's I think it's Power 60 and my capture card, which is this is the only capture solution I have. This EZ cap will not do Power 60. Um, so I thought, well, and for the time being, and also um, a lot of my retro computers, the cables on them are SCART. Now SCART is a thing that it's very hard to get TVs that have a SCART connector on, on them now. And I thought, well, as a long-term solution to this, and just as luck would have it when I looked, it was on special, I got myself a proper HTML SCART, so SCART to HTML um, scaler. So this will properly scale a HDMI single, um, has a power in there, and obviously SCART in there, and you get out HDMI, and you can switch between two different resolutions, 720, 720 and 180p, and there's an audio pass-through output there as well. So at the very least, I should be able to go from something like the Einstein, which I have not been able to capture, onto a HDMI monitor, and then directly film the HDMI monitor. And then eventually I'll also get some sort of solution for capturing HDMI content. Um, and there's a further reason for that, which I'll get on to um, shortly. Um, now, so that's that's really my other pickups uh, for the month. Um, I'll... I did get an Ouya, but I've done another video on the unboxing and picking pickup of the Ouya um, and my initial opinions on that. Um, it's still early days for that console. I love the hardware, um, but they still have a ways to go on getting the operating system and obviously the games. Now, to be fair to it, obviously most of the games have been programmed blind without a real system to test them on. And um, and if the operating system's not finished, it's very hard to finish testing your game. So hopefully they make a lot more progress on the operating system. I mean, it looks nice and it looks like it's got lots of potential but there are quite a few frustrating little issues there like, you know, controls not working properly in some games like being too responsive or uh, like the Pingle game, the lag on it's terrible. But then you play another game and there's no lag. So um, it's just a bit more testing and, and in the operating system itself they've still got too many because um, obviously they've taken it from an Android build there's still too many things that don't have any re relevance to the actual console are still turned on and visible in that interface and they need to tidy those up and fix those and another simple little thing plug two USBs into the back of the thing and it didn't mount or recognize either of them so the only way of getting stuff onto the console was to hook it up via the other the mini USB to a computer and copy files on there now you've only got a limited amount of space on there, there's actually only 8 gigs uh, of memory on there which is a little low if the external USB port's not going to work at the moment so hopefully they'll fix all of those things soon so but anyway um, I'll put a link down to my um, unboxing and initial review of the Ouya 
it is still definitely a system um, that I think holds a lot of potential and you've got to remember it's only a hundred bucks so um, and I think they've done a damn fine job on the design of the actual hardware console itself and the controller they just need a bit more work on the software which I'm sure they will do um, always like to do a, t a response to a tag in my channel update videos um, there are actually a couple but I've honed it down to this one which is um, top game um, covers basically and it was done by the happy console gamer um, and he listed some quite nice ones now I went around in my collection and I'm actually you know quite fond of Japanese manga and art and realized that I have virtually no um, game titles with that sort of art on it um, and also I restricted myself to retro so I could go through and do modern as well but um, I'll, I'll put, do this particular response just for retro so I've done a selection of items from various systems I'll actually start with the oldest one first um, and um, it's one of my favorite arcade games and it's Qbert I mean it's um, obviously cartoony type art it conveys the message of the game nice and colorful and and has a bit of action going on there as well um, and um, another game from one of my favorite systems it's one of my recent pickups and one of my favorite games from the system back in the day and it's Goonies. It really is a nice detailed piece of art on the front there. It conveys the um, you know the characters from one of our you know quite a lot of people's favourite movies. And the game is the best version, best Goonies game on any home system, in my opinion. Now I'm going to agree with the Happy Console game gamer that m most art from the Y series, and this is about the only. Um, entry I've got that properly represents uh, Japanese manga art style but the WISE series of game and the art associated art now I actually do have uh, WISE 2 coming for the MSX soon so um, I'm very excited to get that into the collection to go with these and like this is obviously a CD game for the PC Engine and I don't have a CD add-on for the PC Engine so I haven't played that one the only WISE I've actually played is um, the f um, the wise that's uh, and I'm saying wise aren't I? It's ease um, <coughs> uh, for the Sega Master System. Now the MSX ones, of course, are in Japanese, but there are really good fan translations, and I have that Mega Flash ROM card now, so I can finally play those to their pr um, to how they were deserved. Now also another part um, section of art that I'm particularly fond of, um, being a big science fiction fanatic I am, is science fiction vehicle art um, now I went through quite a few games and there were a couple of couple that came close uh, quite like some of the Darius games art um, and um, and I even put Space Mambo uh, for the MSX on the list as well um, but the art on that one it's just a little dark um, whereas I actually quite like this one this is Super Ladoc for the MSX one um, and actually even the in-game art for MSX1 art, considering you've only got 16 colours available, is actually not bad. Um, I probably should do a... Um, this is a game that I've had for quite some time, and I don't think I've ever done a proper gameplay of it, so... Um, if people are interested, I might have to do a proper singular gameplay on this game. All right, and my last selection... It's a retro unredited, but it's actually really new. So this is an original... Um, title um, released for a retro system which is the ColecoVision. I only got this very recently and I was very impressed with the artwork as well as the game that comes with it and it is Princess Quest for the ColecoVision brought out by Pixel Boy and the actual game is by Oscar Toledo Gutierrez hopefully I pronounce, pronounce that correctly um, and I believe you can still get copies of this game, maybe. We might have some left if you're interested and like Coleco. I'm not sure who did the art box art. Here we go, box art by Jared Hodges. So there we go. So I commend him on this box art because that's his lovely, bright, vibrant um, art. Little touch of manga style in there with the uh, character of the princess up the back there, but it just um, you know captures the spirit of the game. And I said the game is a complete original platform game too, which was quite impressive. So that's my response. Hope that um, 
fits in with the um, with the uh, spirit of uh, of um, what he was looking at there. Um, now another little update on arcade cabinets. Now um, I'm a big arcade fan, and I have my uh, one arcade cabinet, which is a generic cabinet that came with a twin Cobra uh, board uh, that I put a 48 in one in. Um, now I bought another multi board. Um, it's a 200. And, I've written the number down there. 275 board. Now I'm nowhere near impressed with the um, the menu system and some of the emulations. I sort of got this one only because it's got one particular game on it. I know that's sad, isn't it? Uh, and that game's Tutankham. <laughs> Desperate as I am to have an arcade version of Tutankham. Now unfortunately, it doesn't run at the right speed. Now it is playable, but um, I mean I know the speed's not right and. Um, editing goes all well and good hopefully there's a, a bit of a screen capture up here as I'm talking about it but it does have you know 274 although now looking at this I do have the numbers going up to 276 and this one will flip as well and I am potentially I have negotiated hard and I potentially have got my hands on it's an original Tato sit-down cocktail cabinet that was kitted up for Tutankham it has no screen, but it has all of the original stickers and labelling for the Tutankham in it, and it should have the Tutankham board in it. Uh, the confirmation of the Tutankham board and whether it works, has, I haven't got yet. Um, but obviously I'm going to have to put a monitor into it. Um, I also, whilst I was there, um, he'd gone and sold the uh, east-west cabinet I was after, put my MVS in in, but he'd done some more moving around, and I found up the back of his warehouse and East West, another East West cabinet. And guess what it's got in it? Another one of my favourite childhood games, Moon Patrol. Uh, it's a different shaped cabinet. It's got wood grain on the side, which is not my favourite thing. I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do with that. But it's got quite a big screen and it's got a much better chance of working. So um, hopefully in the next week I'll find out about those. And I'm getting another vertical that I'm going to do up from my friend. So um, between that, we'll be able to fix the monitors. I'll probably put a new monitor in my friend's one. So. Um, but I don't know the working condition of any of the monitors and all of those yet. But anyway, back to this multi-board. Um, I need to get the board out because at the end of the day, it's just a circuit board. It has some interesting games on it. There's actually quite a few um, little shoot 'em ups on here uh, as you work your way through. I mean, my other board's got Pleiades on it, but you have um, just in the S section, you've got Space Fireball, Space Force, Space Pilot, which is the clone of Time Pilot. Space Raider, Space Thunderbird, uh, Star Force, Star Jacker, which is the one by Sega, um, and all sorts of ones. Now, but this one, the uh, the Gyrus doesn't run at the right speed, so I'm not comfortable playing it. The Time Pilot, about the same, um, with the gargled sound. I've really got to get a real Time Pilot. Um, but I said, you know, getting hold of some boards, and they're not uh, Jammer boards either so you've got to uh, manually convert them to your harness all the time uh, it's got Xerion on it that's not a bad um, game but there is quite a large sort of games I'll try and do a video on this multi at some stage capturing from the arcade cabinet is uh, a little hard because of reflection but I'm getting better at it um, yes yeah, so arcades could be moving along and they'll probably be my main pickups in the future so because uh, obviously uh, larger expenses um, now, um, I've got one more thing I want, want to talk about in this uh, roundup video, and that's the Xbox One. Um, now, I didn't watch it live because I don't have that much of a glaring interest in the next generation consoles. I was very slow to get into the PS3, which is the one I got first, and the Xbox 360 I only had an original one of those because my friend who I helped get a job gave me one. Um, and I uh, and I played Halo 3 on it because I played Halo 1 and 2 on the original Xbox which is the only reason I got that for um, so you know I was mainly a PS2 person not an Xbox person before then and I have played the PS3 a fair bit although the kids have almost exclusively taken over that system and that TV so I haven't played many of the um, PS3 games we we have purchased um, after the last one I properly played through, uh, I mean all the way through would have been Uncharted 3. Um, and that's the thing, if a new Uncharted came out for the PS4, I would think about getting it, but I wouldn't get it at launch. 
um, because I wouldn't spend that sort of money on a console. And then I watched this Xbox One Live um, launch. No, I sorry, I didn't watch it live. I watched it later on the next day, and um, I wasn't impressed at all. I mean, they showed barely any actual real game footage. It was all you know, full motion video, and half the time they were talking about things that don't interest me at all. And um, I can understand everybody's disappointment. Now we do have E3 coming up, um, and they from both camps, I mean, I didn't find the PS4 one particularly enlightening either, but the Microsoft one, especially after their recent launch of Windows 8, and um, the criticism they received of that, they go on and do something even the next step up. And as people say, um, the very fact that the Kinect uh, camera is able to uh, monitor things in a room as long as you say OK, and this cloud processing and computing thing, um, they are trying, I mean, I can understand they're trying to do this new innovative technology, but they shouldn't be trying to force it onto everybody. And um, I don't think the internet is strong enough around the world to support this sort of a device. And the price, I mean, we still don't really know the exact price. Those early Amazon prices that are out there usually are way overinflated. Um, but still the box looks huge, it looks like it's got a lot of components in it and I can't see them selling it for too cheap. I mean they lost a lot of money, the Xbox division, even including all the 360's they have sold, they have continued to lose money on the consoles all this time. So it's not exactly a place where they make money. Um, and yes, they always, most of the makers lose money on the consoles um, and they make it up from the licensing from the games. Um, but they can only afford to lose so much. Um, and, um, you know, I think they have made the Xbox One far too complicated than it needs to be. And you can put together a PC that does most of what that can do for less. So I don't understand. It's the same as Windows 8 machines. Um, Microsoft's primary business are business users, and there's no way that a touch interface is going to be ergonomically friendly to office use. It shows completely how out of touch they are with the real world. And that's the scariest thing about the Xbox One. Sony with the PS4, it's, I mean, yes, they've got some other things in there. And I said I'm not even going to mention DRM because I'm neither here nor there with that. Because um, I don't buy a lot of modern games, so it doesn't fuss me as much. I don't buy downloaded content, at least not expensive downloaded content. Um, we've also got to remember like with Xbox uh, Live here we don't have the indie games down here in Australia because unless something has been rated it's not allowed to be released and indie games aren't rated um, so there's no value in getting Xbox Live and um, I've got a PS3 and I don't have to pay for anything on that so there's no appeal there sorry for the small cut dogs again um, anyway so I mean, I'm not being particularly negative against it. It surprised me that that was their first introduction to the world of that device. I mean, have they completely forgotten about what their primary market is, which is gamers? And there was nothing for gamers there. I mean, they were just kids excited about all this newfangled technology. Look, see, look at this, all this newfangled technology. Aren't you excited as well? But just being excited and having new pieces of technology doesn't mean you're going to, you know, the people who want to lump down a, a wad of cash for something that's what they're after so anyway that's my two cents worth so coming up next so once again I'm going to promise about retro PC gameplays but I have actually done a test capture now and it worked fine and I'm happy with the quality of it um, so I'll be definitely doing those this month um, of course in about a week's time we'll have the next YouTuber of the month um, votes are closed and counted and the uh, winner has been informed um, so uh, working on that in the next week um, I'm going to try and um, hunt through my collection and do some other gameplays of games that I've missed and I do have uh, another Kickstarter item um, that I believe will be shipping soon which is the GCW um, handheld um, system which I'm actually quite looking forward to although I am terrible at playing my handhelds I have a few handhelds but I don't use them enough um, although I've got some PSP items so you know uh, just it's all down to time organization half the time isn't it and um, 
and there is another Kickstarter uh, Dreamcast game, which is Redux Dark Matters. Uh, hopefully that will come out in the next month. I believe they're very close. They're working on the bonus level, which was part of the extended part of the Kickstarter. Um, a short bit of my games. Um, I am down to the last couple of little finicky little bugs. Um, my two beta testers have done a very good job, but they're in general happy with the games. I've already fixed one of them. Um, and I have a um, little bit of extra sound added in another spot and um, just a little tweak on one of the games and that's ready to go and I've already started work on my next game which is Pixidus. Um, uh, that code's obviously a lot newer than the, um, the other one so it's a lot cleaner um, and I've already got that semi working on the Coleco hardware. It didn't take very long at all so my library's looking pretty good. Um, but I will be enhancing that game a lot more. I want to um, spend a lot more time on the music, the sound effects, make the levels longer and have more variety in both the enemies and the end of level bosses because it is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up after all and I want it to be really good. Um, I'm still undecided about whether it will require the extra memory module which is the SGM module for the Coleco or not. Uh, it depends whether I can fit into the 1K of RAM that the Coleco has. Um, but I'm not going to compromise the game for trying to squeeze it into the 1K just to run for the normal Coleco users and since um, the first 200 S S SGM units for the Coleco um, sold out and have all been delivered uh, well that's another thing that I'm getting soon um, uh, and there are apparently already 60 people down for the next batch of the SGM modules so you're talking you know at least 250 people out there who will be interested in buying a game for a Coleco with the expanded memory so it's probably safer to just release the majority of the games for that and not compromise on the quality of the games. Um, I wouldn't mind picking up a couple more of the um, homebrew gut titles that I missed as long as there's copies available. They only make so many of each one, of course. Um, all right, well, that's probably enough of me rambling for the moment. Thank you all for watching my videos. It's all, always appreciated and commenting. I love commenting and responding. Uh, thank you to all my subscribers and I'll catch you all next time.